casting a SkinFlex 5 polyurethane arm. In this video, I'm going to be going over the process of using SkinFlex 5, this is a soft polyurethane rubber, to cast up a prop arm. Now, SkinFlex 5 is a very strong, tough, but soft polyurethane rubber that's ideal for casting medical simulators and special effects skins and any kind of application where you're simulating human skin, but you need properties of polyurethane, not necessarily a platinum silicone. And because this cures translucent, it can be painted and colored and manipulated much the same as you would a platinum silicone skin material. Now, for the mold on this, now one of the important considerations, and I'll get into this a little bit more here in a minute, but one of the important considerations is the mold material that you use for SkinFlex 5. Typically, you want to be pouring this into a platinum silicone mold, not a tin cure silicone. So here, I'm just doing a quick life cast mold with platinum silicone of one of my daughter's arms. And the main reason I wanted to show this part of the process is you see that gap in the plaster bandage uh, shell around that arm. I did that for a reason to allow that to kind of breathe as I pull that off her arm. That's a, a technique that I picked up from uh, Berman Studios, their uh, life casting video from many, many moons ago. So uh, just a neat little trick there for being able to pull off a seamless arm mold. Now here what I'm doing is just securing that with some packing tape. And then I'm going to take this mold and set it upright in a mixing bucket so I can cast into it just standing straight up. But there you see that I didn't go all the way around the arm with those plaster bandages. And that was by design so that again has a little bit of breathing room to help demold that off my daughter's arm. Now what I'm doing here is just setting this up with some packing paper and setting that upright in that mixing bucket. And then this is gonna look a little janky, but what I'm doing is using more packing tape to secure a three quarter inch uh, wooden dowel uh, upright in there to simulate bone inside that forearm. So kind of funky here the way I'm doing it, but uh, because this is a life cast mold, I don't have the advantage of making a nice jig as I'd like to do typically for if I was pouring this into a silicone block mold on my workbench. But uh, in a later video, we'll get more into that process. So what I've done here is just secured that with packing tape. And then I'm using my uh, light on my iPhone here to just check and make sure that that dowel rod is centered and doesn't touch uh, the sides of the mold. And now we are ready for casting. And because this is a platinum silicone, I don't need any mold release for this, but just real important to make sure if you are using an armature for bone material or anything, make sure that doesn't touch the sides of the mold. Now, a quick word about the properties of SkinFlex 5. Of course, this is a, a very soft polyurethane elastomer. This mixes one to one by weight and it cures to a soft Shore A5 has about a nine to 10 minute working time, five to six hour demold, and of course that's all at room temperature. And you can color this intrinsically with 6,900 pigments. And those of course are phthalate free. And you can soften or increase the elongation by using the SC5 softener. Now, for those of you casting realistic uh, medical simulators or special effects skins, if you need to paint the end result, you can use SC94. And that, of course, is a single component polyurethane paint system that you can pigment. And I'll show more about that at the end of the video. But that works great, sticks beautifully to the SkinFlex 5. And of course, if you are curious, this is phthalate free, and that's why we recommend the phthalate free 6900 pigments. And of course, it's ROHS and REACH compliant. Now also, it's important to remember these considerations for working with SkinFlex 5. Ideally, this needs to be cast into a properly prepared or released platinum silicone mold or a compatible resin mold. And when in doubt, call BJB, check and make sure your process and materials are compatible. Also, you wanna make sure you're using this at 75 degrees or warmer or room temperature. And I found this out when I ordered some as a cold spell came in, the part A can solidify when it drops below 60 degrees, but that's okay. You can reconstitute it and return it to its liquid state by applying mild heat. So just remember if your part A solidifies, you can use mild heat of around 100 degrees Fahrenheit to return that to its liquid state. Really important detail. Make sure you're storing your materials at 65 degrees or warmer. 
So with that out of the way, let's get to the casting stage. Now again, this is a one-to-one -one mix ratio. And first things first, anytime I'm simulating human skin with a material like this, I always want to dispense my part B first because the B is the least sensitive to moisture contamination. So the B is the side that typically I add my pigments to and get that just right before I add the part A. Because remember, as soon as you add part A, the clock starts ticking and you gotta get everything into the mold as soon as possible. Now this does have a relatively long working time, about a nine to 10 minute working time at room temperature temperature. And you'll see I'm adding the flesh pigment to the part B. And I'm adding this just a little bit at a time so that I maintain that translucency because I really want this to wind up being a translucent skin so I get a nice realistic look to my finished arm. So I'm just adding a little bit of the 6918 flesh tone. Now as I mentioned earlier, SkinFlex 5 is phthalate free. And that's why I'm using the 6918 phthalate free pigment. So real important if we wanna maintain that phthalate free status that we use a phthalate free pigment. Now you can also add SC5 softener to soften the skin flex and give it higher stretch or elongation. Now for this application that wasn't necessary but it's important to know about that component. Now, one of the things I wanted to try mixing this up, this was like my first arm to ever cast up in SkinFlex. So I wanted to do this much the same way I would with a silicone skin material. So I'm adding flocking in addition to the pigment. So this is just regular flocking. This is actually some flocking I got from uh, Fox and Superfine over in Georgia. And I'm stirring that in. Again, this is all into the part B before I have added part A. Really important there to make sure that way you get the maximum amount of working time to get your color just right before you activate that by adding part A. Now, a little trick for those of you that mix up a lot of flesh tones, anytime you wind up with your color going a little bit too pink, you can add a little bit of green to that to knock that pink back down. And uh, here I'm adding just a little bit of green flocking to get uh, more natural, a more natural like olive tone to my flesh tone. And now we have our translucent part B. And again, we added just enough pigment and just enough flocking that we maintain that translucency. And the color is going to change just a little bit when we add that part A, but not a lot. The part A is kind of a clear amber, so it really doesn't affect the color that much. And this was my literally my first time to mix this up, and I think I got pretty good results considering. Now, remember that as soon as we add our part A, the clock starts ticking. So we have that nine to 10 minute working time at room temperature as soon as the A goes into the part B. So you wanna make sure you get that thoroughly mixed, scraping the sides and the bottom of the mixing container. And then because I'm pouring this into a hand mold and I wanna make sure I get as nice of a cast as possible, I'm going to vacuum degas this material. So I'm mixing this up. I spend about uh, a minute or two mixing that thoroughly, making sure I scrape the sides and the bottom of the bucket really well. And then I'm going to subject that to a vacuum. And what you're looking for with the vacuum is the material to rise and then collapse. And once it collapses, it'll kind of undulate for a little bit, but uh, you don't need to let it stop doing that before you remove the material from the vacuum chamber. You just, the main thing you're looking for is it to rise and collapse, and then you're ready to remove that and pour it into your mold. Now, for those of you curious, if you're dealing with a mold, a large open face mold, that uh, doesn't lend itself to a solid pour. You could always uh, add the fiber thick thickener to this if you wanted to brush this into a mold. And I'll be doing some work later where I'll be doing exactly that, where I thicken this with fiber thick and then brush it in to form a skin inside a silicone mold. So I'm just doing a nice slow pour into the mold and just watching for any air bubbles coming up out of the fingertips. This is a little tricky just because a hand like that, especially a life cast mold, you never know exactly how the fingers are positioned until you pour up the first copy. So here I've just moved the mold around so you can see that a little bit better, but I left myself a gap in that tape so I can pour. And in a follow-up video, I'm gonna make a more permanent platinum silicone mold so I can pour up multiple copies of this hand. And when I do that, I'll make a more permanent rig for uh, putting an armature inside the skin flex every time I cast that. So more about that in a follow-up video. 
Now, once we get that poured, ready to let that sit at room temperature. And I actually added a little bit of heat to accelerate this. I have a, a closet in my shop that sometimes I'll put a space heater in there to speed things along. So this is actually only about uh, an hour and a half later with this by a space heater and it sped it way faster. So I was able to demold this in about uh, an hour and a half. Now, since I didn't use any mold release in the casting process, this is ready for painting. But if you do use mold release, make sure you clean it off the part before you try to paint it. Now for paint, I'll be using the SC94 and I've done some painting tutorials before using this. So if you wanna see a more full length tutorial on that, uh, I'll put a link on the end screen. But uh, SC94, you can mix that with tints. These are actually tints I got from a paint store that are designed for mixing with uh, latex paint. And always a good idea to have a color wheel handy and just a good knowledge of color theory and really good lighting anytime you're painting like this, especially when you're doing translucent painting. Now, I didn't necessarily paint this up to match my daughter's arm. She is about 13, so she has nice, pristine, nice skin, and it would almost look like a fake arm if I mimicked her uh, arm exactly. So I wanted to do some uh, freckles and things like that, some of the normal steps I usually do when I'm uh, painting silicone, and I didn't want to break out my airbrush, so I did this all with brushes and a flick brush. So here I'm just mixing up a little bit of a, a translucent orange, to use on the knuckles and the fingertips. And I basically just wanted to take this through all the usual steps that I do with a silicone prop and just see how that would work with a polyurethane. And much of it was pretty much the same, except here I'm using a water-based paint material, this SC94. This is a single component water-based material. You can thin it with distilled water, but you wanna be really careful about that because you know thinning that with a lot of water does change the physical properties. And as it comes, SC94 is a nice airbrush consistency. I typically run this through a Pache external mix airbrush. So easy material to work with. And again, if you're unfamiliar with this process for painting polyurethane props and things like this, um, check out my other painting tutorial and I will link that on the end screen. So definitely check that out because this is a great material for painting uh, flexible foam props and these harder to paint urethane systems like this. So as long as you have a clean part that is free of any kind of mold release residue, the SC94 uh, sticks very well. But typically the same rules apply as when you're painting a silicone part. You wanna make sure you're painting a fairly fresh part that hasn't been handled a lot. And then again, most importantly is to make sure it doesn't have any mold release residue on the surface because obviously if it kept it from sticking to the mold, it's gonna keep the paint from sticking. Now here I'm just using a cut down one inch chip brush to do some flick painting to make some freckles. Again, uh, mainly wanted to just test some of these techniques out and see how they work on this skin material and not necessarily trying to do an exact replica of my daughter's arm. Now this is my first attempt at it and I think the results are pretty good. So those of you that are much more artistically inclined than yours truly will probably get much better results than what I'm getting here. But you get the idea of what all can be done. And of course, as usual, I will link all of the materials used in this video down in the video description, so be sure to check that out. All of the uh, silicone mold materials, the foams, flexible foams, and phthalate-free pigments are all available from bjbmaterials.com. And of course, check the end screen. I'll put some other resources for those of you just starting out casting with flexible foams and of course, painting flexible polyurethane surfaces. And as always, thanks for watching and thanks for supporting the channel.